We are about to feast like we've never feasted before. Today I'm gonna be taste testing a bunch of TikTok viral recipes that I've been drooling over for months, some of these. And I'm gonna let you know if they're as good as the internet thinks they are. I don't think I have ever made this many recipes in my YouTube career in one video. Bold statement. But I think it's gonna be worth it once we taste test all of these delicious eats. I mean, I have everything from cheesy carbs to delicious sweets treats. This video is sponsored by HelloFresh. More on them in a second, but let's just say I have a lot of delicious food in my fridge right now and I cannot wait to share it. Oh, I would like to start with a viral recipe that was so confusing and I was highly skeptical of. This is what the internet is calling a healthy Coke. So all it is is an ice cube, some seltzer, water, sparkling water, any flavor apparently or no flavor at all. And are you ready for this? You're not ready for this. And balsamic vinegar. Oh man. Just trust the process. I don't want to. By the way, this seltzer I used is mixed berry. No, absolutely not. No. This does not taste like Coke. This tastes like, I can't say it because it's a curse word. I wonder if there's like some club that everybody's a part of that I'm not a part of where they're like, we're all gonna lie to everyone and see how many views we can get. Everybody who's done this has been like, hmm, I would rather drink bath water. And I have had bath water on the internet in the past. Don't Google it, it was a dark time. But I can confirm I'd rather drink bath water. <laughs> we need to have a serious conversation about this. Matt clearly tried one of these yesterday and I think he had a spiritual awakening. This is a cinnamon bun recipe hack where this girl made this concoction to like take cinnamon, cinnamons? Cinnamon buns to the next level, which honestly, did they need to level up? That was my question, but I had to try it. This recipe is so simple, it's crazy. So start with your classic cinnamon rolls from the grocery store and you're gonna lay those out in a small baking dish. You're going to pour in enough heavy whipping cream to cover the rolls about halfway. The original recipe calls to cover them completely, but I think that's too much. You're going to melt a stick of butter and mix in about a cup of brown sugar topped with a dash of cinnamon and you're gonna stir that mixture until it's all combined together. Then you're gonna pour this mixture on top of the cinnamon rolls and this visual might be compared to an art exhibit depending on who you ask. Then you're gonna bake that at 350 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes. Make sure to keep your eye on them so they don't burn. And once they're out, you're going to use the icing that comes standard with the cinnamon rolls and smear it all over while it's still piping hot. And you guys know what to do at this point. Take a photo on Instagram, of course, and then you gotta eat it. This smells like the food court at the mall. I love that smell. Weirdly has like a French toast texture to it. Cause y'all, this is naughty. This is maybe the top five best things I've ever made on this channel. It has this cinnamon roll flavor, obviously it's a cinnamon roll, but it has like a fresh donut meets French toast vibe, but not overpowering. It's like a subtle nod to all of those things. Like a last meal on earth meal. That's what this would be. If you don't do anything else from this video, please do this. Please do this. Next are these healthy cookies, which those two words, actually, I don't think they really ever truly go together. Start with two ripe bananas and mash those up in a mixing bowl. Tip here is to not mash them too much like I did. Then you're gonna add in about a half cup of peanut butter of your choice, but just so you know, the peanut butter spreads work better than those natural peanut butters for this recipe. Throw in a dash of vanilla. Next you're gonna use raw oats and you're gonna fold in about a half cup of those and then mix really, really well. Then you can add some toppings of your choice, but I did choose chocolate chips because these are cookies after all. You do need to refrigerate this mixture for about 10 minutes and then you're going to lay these out on a cookie sheet and sprinkle with sea salt and just bake them for about 15 minutes at 350 degrees and here they are. These do not look appetizing and I should have known that they probably wouldn't be because of how good the girl's abs were who was doting on this recipe. But the thing that threw me off about this is that there were no eggs involved and had there been eggs involved, we wouldn't be questioning this weird, soggy, limpy texture. 
The flavor's not bad, but it ain't a delicious cookie. If you had told me this is just a healthy mound of pile of stuff, I probably would enjoy it. But because my brain thinks cookie first, it can't process anything other than the fact that this is not a cookie. I think the texture was thrown off by the fact that I had some really juicy nanas, and you don't want your nanas juicy, I can confirm. Okay, it tastes good, it's fine. It needs something else. I do think an egg would help. I don't know if maybe it needs like a nut. It just needs sugar, that's really what it needs. Next up is this three ingredient mac and cheese, which is actually more like a five ingredient when you count the spices. First, you're gonna shred at least one block of cheddar cheese, and also I shredded some Colby Jack for fun. And make sure you don't use prepackaged or pre shredded cheese, it's just not as good. Next, you're gonna add six ounces of elbow pasta, and then you're gonna add in just enough water to that to cover the pasta, and then you're gonna get this boiling. And then once the pasta is kind of cooked al dente and soaked up most of the water, you're going to add in a can of evaporated milk. Kind of a weird choice, but just trust the process. And then you're gonna bring that mixture to a boil a second time. And then you're gonna fold in the cheese. We all know how to do it by this point. And watch it all transform into this creamy mac and cheese right before your eyes. Now I added extra cheese here because it seemed slightly watery and I don't regret that choice. I also seasoned it with some salt and pepper for extra flavor. And just a few moments later, you have this pretty delicious looking mac and cheese. I just kind of went ham on the cheese and I'm glad that I did because I love this consistency now. Wait, this is very nostalgic. Hold on, what does this taste like? You guys don't know, you can't taste it. I've got it. This tastes like Golden Corral macaroni and cheese. It tastes like buffet. I'm sliding my tray down that little metal railing and I get seven servings worth of mac and cheese and maybe a few green beans in a roll. I can't tell if it's good or if I'm just emotional about it. I do think it's better than boxed mac and cheese. I don't think it's as good as gourmet mac and cheese, but it's only a few steps. It's only a few ingredients. So if you can manage to make it, you should, because I think it's worth it. I have been using HelloFresh for many years now. It was actually one of the first companies I ever worked with on my main channel. And now I'm a frequent customer. Also, Matt's parents are frequent customers. We're a big HelloFresh fam. HelloFresh is a meal delivery service where you can plan and customize fresh, delicious, chef-curated meals that arrive to your door with all of the ingredients already ready already. You don't have to go to the grocery store, which is my least favorite place on earth, next to the eye doctor. Everything is pre-measured, pre-sorted, so that you never waste food ingredients. Usually recipes call for like unique seasonings or sauces and you have to go buy something specifically for that item in your recipe. And then it sits in your pantry and expires. With HelloFresh that doesn't even happen. They give you all of the ingredients that you need. Everything is fresh. They do pull a lot of their ingredients from local farmers, so you are kind of supporting more of the small business aspect of the food industry. You can determine when they deliver to you. You can determine where they deliver to you. If you're on vacation, you can pause your membership for that week. But my favorite part about HelloFresh, besides the fact that it's very delicious, is that you get to try so many new recipes, things that you would never try on your own. And they have so many recipes to choose from, so you never feel like you're repeating the same things over and over again. It's amazing recipes to throw in the rotation so that you never get bored. I also love how easy these recipes are. They take like around 20 to 30 minutes per recipe to cook, so not a lot of time. So HelloFresh is offering you guys a very special deal because you're watching my video, which I totally appreciate. Click the link down below, go to hellofresh.com, use code Aaron Robinson 16 You're gonna get 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. Go to hellofresh.com, use my code Aaron Robinson 16 to get 16 free meals plus three surprise gifts. Next up, we're gonna make this super healthy peanut chopped protein grain bowl. Dust off your chopping skills for this one because you're gonna be doing a lot of chopping. You're gonna chop some cabbage, a variety of different bell peppers. I used red, orange, and yellow. Then you're also going to peel and chop some fresh carrots, a jalapeno, and some green onions, and also a radish. I told you, it's a lot of chopping. And then you're gonna take a minute to admire all of your hard work before you mix it all together. Now this recipe called for edamame, but I bought the unpeeled kind 
kind of edamame and then I realized how much work it would be to peel all of them. So we just did a dash of edamame because I was exhausted. So you're gonna toss in some roasted nuts of your choice and mix that in. And for the dressing, which is honestly the hardest part, you're going to add some water, peanut butter, some soy sauce, some fresh minced garlic, and some white wine vinegar. And you're gonna combine all of that together to kind of make this dressing. I recommend tasting it as you go so you can add things that might be missing flavor-wise. Next, I'm going to mix the dressing into the salad mix. Oh, that might have been too much. Might have been. It's pretty. It smells good. That mac and cheese gets you every time. Mmm. One thing's for sure, you're gonna chew a lot. Which is gonna really work your jaw muscle. It's good, but I think the dressing could have used a little more umph. It called for sriracha. I didn't have any. And I think it's missing that key ingredient, but it kind of falls flat. It's kind of like watered down peanut flavor. Honestly, I made cowboy caviar on this channel. It was another TikTok recipe that I made, and I think I prefer it over this. I, I would give this kind of like a four out of 10. The TikTok that I followed didn't actually give these specific ingredients for the dressing, which they always do that on TikTok. They always just try to get you to click on more videos. So I thought I was confident enough to eyeball it myself. That was my first mistake. It's not a viral recipe. Don't believe it. Next, we're gonna make pizza eggs, which is a very simple recipe. So I'm just gonna do it right here, right now, fresh with you. So I have some leftover pizza here. Let me know in the comments if you know which pizza this is. <laughs> True OG subscribers will know. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna add your pizza to your pan with truffle oil. You can do it with any oil, obviously, but I love truffle oil. And I say oh, because I'm from North Carolina. We say oh and cement. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you're gonna crack your egg. See if I can do this with one hand. <laughs> She's a chef. So now I'm just gonna mix it all together. This technique is fantastic. And I'll be right back with pizza eggs. And here it is in all of its glory. This already tastes good and I'm just tasting it with my eyes. Oh my gosh. Oh. This tastes like a pizza panini. There's chewiness, there's sauce, there's pepperonis. I thought it would be fine. I had no idea it would be scrumptious. It's like drugs, but food drugs. And y'all know, I have some pizza wrecks if you need them. I saw this TikTok where this girl was like, just like cussing all over the place at how amazing this dish was. And I was like, if she's that inspired by this dish, then I have to try it. This is like this cauliflower appetizer of sorts. And it has like an unusual recipe, but I have confidence in it. I have to be honest with you, I winged this recipe a lot, but you start by chopping up your cauliflower florets into bite-sized pieces. And then you're gonna pick up some pitted dates. It's important that the pit are removed and then you're really gonna struggle to chop these smushy sticky things into small diced pieces but I believe in you and in the sharpness of your knife hopefully then you're gonna add your cauliflower to a pot with a drizzle of olive oil the original TikTok had you putting this in the oven to roast but I just did this on the stove and it worked out pretty well once the cauliflower softens and browns a little bit then you're gonna add in your chopped dates and kind of let those caramelize on a medium heat for a few minutes toss in some pine nuts extra credit if you roasted them a few minutes prior to combining them now if I had had tahini sauce I would have I've added the scallions and mint here to that sauce, but I just threw them in here for flavor at the end. And here it is. This recipe called for a tahini sauce, which I purchased at the store, but when I went to shake it up, it exploded everywhere. But that's okay, because this kind of looks delicious just as it is. And if it's as good as it is without tahini sauce, how much better would it be with tahini sauce? You know what I mean? Let's give it a shot. Wait a second. Oh. It's lovely. It's like a great, easy to grab, easy to make dinner appetizer if somebody's coming over and you wanna kinda of look impressive and seem impressive but not put in as much work as you, you might normally put in. Usually I just make a cheese board, but this is kind of like just as easy and equally as delicious. But it's savory and it's crunchy, but it's also soft. So there's a lot going on and it makes you feel like when you're eating it, you're eating something fancy. This is a viral cheese 
cheese dip. You guys know I feel very passionate about cheese dips. I feel like I'm on the hunt for the best cheese dip recipe out there. From the looks of this, this might be a contender. I was so excited about this one. You're gonna assemble all of these ingredients in one baking dish, which is awesome. I added small chunks of Colby Jack cheddar and cream cheese to the dish along with chopped vine ripe tomatoes and ground beef. And I also threw in some diced jalapenos and green onions. In a separate pan, I tossed some cumin, some cayenne, paprika, and then probably a little too much garlic powder. I let that toast for about a minute on medium heat. Then I added the seasonings to my baking dish. And then it's so easy, you guys. You just stick this whole thing in the oven at 375 degrees for 15 minutes. And then once it's done, you stir everything to combine it all. And once it's all melted, you are ready to serve. It seems weird to look at it in a cup but it's the only way I can just really show you all of the deliciousness. It actually doesn't look delicious now that I'm looking at it. It kind of looks gross. Just forget I showed you. Just block it out. This has a little bit of a lumpy texture, but I think it's because I used cream cheese, which wasn't in the original recipe, but I can't do Velveeta. I just, I can't, I can't do it. I need like real cheese, you know what I mean? Oh, okay. <laughs> Good. I know it doesn't look like it. It's very salty. It's so salty. It's good. What's, I put too much of something in here. It is very, very salty. Oh, I hate that because it's so good. Is it too salty? I don't know. I feel like it's probably bad. <laughs> it really does kind of taste like an appetizer from like a chain restaurant, like a Chili's or something. I'm really grateful for HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. I really could not do videos on my channel without the help of sponsors. So if you haven't tried HelloFresh, please go click the link down below, get your 16 free meals plus three surprise gifts. If you haven't subscribed to this channel and when you're watching this, I'm probably in Vietnam. Uh, so go follow me on Instagram for all of my food journeys over there that I might also share with you here. So let me know what you want me to taste test in Vietnam.